Hey all you cool cats and kittens. Actually, I'm pretty sure that's probably like trademarked, so. Oops, don't sue me. Um, so today we are making a Sunday sauce, which if you don't know what that is, it's, it's an Italian red sauce. They call it a Sunday sauce because basically you want to cook it like all day Sunday. Um, usually four hours at least. It's a short rib based red sauce. I'll get more into that when I start making it. Um, this is my quarantine look for the day. Thanks for joining me. Day 820 billion of quarantine. Um, so yeah, I figured I had pretty much enough time to make a Sunday sauce. We're gonna make homemade spaghetti noodles and homemade focaccia. So let's get into it. Again, sorry for my poor video skills but uh, you're gonna have to get over it. Okay, hopefully you can see this. I don't know, I'm gonna list the recipe and all the steps and stuff below if you miss anything, whatever, but I'm gonna get started. So first we're gonna start by browning the short rib. I have about two pounds of short rib, more like 1.7 pounds if that really matters. I'm gonna do it here in this cast iron skillet. I'm gonna make everything in this huge skillet. This is a huge cast iron skillet. Um, I love cooking with cast iron. I did a lot of red meats in this last week, so it is highly seasoned very, very well. You don't have to have, you can use like a pot like this, whatever, I'm talking too much. But anyways, I'm gonna get in here and brown the sides of the short rib. I'll fast forward kind of through that. And then once I brown them, set them aside and we're gonna start making the sauce. So I'm gonna get this on high heat. That's my dog. Put a little olive oil in the pot, pan, whatever. This one's almost gone, so. Throw that away. I would say like, just enough to cover the bottom of your pan. Mine's obviously a little bit larger. Right, we're gonna hear Cash, he's gonna be my assistant today. Okay, so we're gonna get this really hot. High heat, okay. so my pan's really hot. Getting some tongs. I have about three pieces of short rib here. Uh, if I can get it off. Moving the oil around. So one. This one's a fat boy. Some nice crisp on them. Each side. It's like a nice crisp. I don't know if you can see this. I don't want to bring it over there. I just want to have some browning. Especially on your bigger pieces. Like this bad boy over here. I'm going to leave them set for a while. This one kind of looks better. I don't even know if you can hear me at this point. I hope so. Little burn. Okay, so insert snippets. I totally forgot. You are going to need to start this sauce at least, I should say this, so good, at least four hours before you actually want to serve it. It's a Sunday sauce. It's a slow cooker. Six hours is really great if you have it. Four hours really all you need. Okay, so I turned this pan to really low heat now. It's super, super hot from when we were crisping up our ribs. But now I'm going to add the onion. Let that kind of cook down a little and then we're gonna add the garlic, but we're gonna saute this onion around. I'm gonna get rid of these. Grab the onion real quick. Sorry, my water's running. Okay, getting the onion. Watch out, it's probably gonna pop around. I have it on low heat, but this pan is super, super hot. I have a whole medium large onion. I did not do anything to the pan. I left all the good juices from the meat. 
stop paying this. I eventually will turn it back to a high heat. I just don't want to overdo it right now because I know this pan is really hot. Smelling good in here. Yeah, if you want to impress your Italian grandmother, you're trying to impress your girlfriend, your boyfriend, fiance, this is a pretty good meal to do that. I mean, it's a little scary, but I mean, if you're feeling creative, it's also really fun. If you've never made like a homemade pasta sauce, homemade bread, homemade noodles, it's always really like rewarding. This is what you want your onions to look like. You want them nice, brown, caramelized, Took me about five minutes, medium high heat. I put it back down to a medium heat. We're gonna add the garlic. Okay, so we're gonna add the garlic to our onions. It's a lot of garlic. I love garlic. Basically a whole jar. That's about one heaping tablespoon. We're gonna add more. Good old squirt. Okay, mix that around, saute it up. This is what it should look like. It looks goddess-like. Okay, now that we did the onion and the, the garlic, it smells good, it looks good. We're gonna add all of our tomato nits, which again, recipe link below. You have it all in front of you, hopefully right now. Say hi, Ted. Scaring me. Hello, Quad Cities! <laughs> Apparently, I locked the front door. Okay, all the tomatoes are in there. I am going to add three tablespoons brown sugar. I'm going to add probably, like, let's do one, two, three, four, five shakes. Red pepper. Um, probably like two teaspoons black pepper. I use coarse ground black pepper because better flavor. Um, I'm going to use this basil paste. You can use fresh basil. I'm gonna do probably a tablespoon. And then I've got my pink Himalayan sea salt. I'm probably just gonna do four cracks for now because the ribs will add a little bit of saltiness to it. I'm gonna mix this around. <laughs> I'm just gonna let you guys know who, you know, can't smell. It smells delicious. Oh my gosh. Mamma mia. Mamma mia, it's a beautiful one. We're gonna add the short rib back in. Beautiful. Nestled in there. Oh my God, I'm like already so hungry. To a boil. Once it comes to a boil, you're gonna turn it down, maybe like medium low simmer. Your oven's gonna be different, I, I don't know, but you just want it to be on a very low simmer. I'm gonna show you how, if you don't have like a lid for the top of whatever pan you're using, I'm gonna show you how I make one out of parchment. But that is basically it. We're gonna bring this to a boil. Once it boils, bring it down to a simmer, and we are going to let it cook for four hours. Used parchment paper, just kind of cover your lid, make a little steam hole. Eventually this will kind of get suctioned down in there. But that is my lid. Hello, a little bit different view. So now we're moving on to making the focaccia bread. It's fairly easy to make focaccia bread. It's really, really good, really dangerous, depending on what you want to put on top of it, which you can put literally anything on top of a focaccia bread. I'm going to do Asiago cheese and some thinly sliced shallots just because I love shallots. Um, but that's not until a little while from now. So I'm going to show you how to make the dough. So here we go. I have four cups flour in this bowl. I'm going to do two shakes, two cracks. Sorry, I wasn't really full. Two cracks of my Himalayan salt. I'm going to do maybe just like literally a quarter teaspoon of pepper and then all the rest of your seasonings are going to be on top of the bread. So this is literally all that you're going to season it with. Um, for the yeast part of this bread, I have a tablespoon of sugar in here. We're going to do two cups of water. Again, don't feel like you have to write this down because 
it's below this video, but we're gonna do two cups warm water. If you have a thermometer, cool. If you don't, I'm gonna say it's gonna be like hot tub water. You don't want it to be too hot. You wanna be able to stick your finger in it and not, you know, be burnt. Um, but if you do have a thermometer, you don't want the water to be hotter than 114 degrees. If so, you will kill the yeast. A little fun tip. The sugar is for the yeast to feed off of. I'll shut up now, but we're gonna get two cups of your warm water in here. Okay, so I got my two cups warm water. I'm gonna do a heaping tablespoon of instant dry yeast. You can get a big bag like this at Sam's. It comes in like a two pack. You can get cute little like packages of them. But yeah, I'm gonna do like a heaping tablespoon. And then we're just gonna whisk it into your warm water. You don't have to get the clumps out or anything, just make sure it's saturated. Okay, and then we're gonna let that sit just until it kind of starts to look frothy almost, and then that's when we can use it. So I'll be right back when this is all frothy. All right, so my water started to froth up. I'm just gonna make a little hole in the middle of this flour bowl and pour it right in the middle. This is gonna be a very, very, very liquidy, sticky bread. So basically I'm just gonna do folding motion. I'm gonna fold your bread together. Okay, so at this point I've got it like it's kind of shaggy looking. So this we're gonna do like four tablespoons of oil. I'm gonna use this normal olive oil and I'm gonna use two tablespoons right now. So one, two, and that's gonna kind of get the rest of this crap off the bowl because I'm gonna let it proof in this bowl as well. But we're gonna keep mixing. Okay. So we're gonna kind of get it into a ball form. It's looking good. So this is what it looks like. I tried to clean most of the stuff off the bowl. I wanna get it in one little area. I'm going to go back with the same plain olive oil, do the one, two tablespoons. We just want it to keep moisture in the bowl. We want it to not stick to the bowl. So, you know, just kind of push your sides down in there. Let it get under the bread. And there we go. So I'm going to cover it with a damp cloth. You can use like a dish towel too. This one I know is a decorative one, but it's just kind of worn out. So I use it as a normal towel now. Um, damp. I just covered it. I have it setting next to my simmering sauce just to kind of get some heat to help it proof. So now we're going to make our pasta noodle. Here's me like showing off my little noodle roller, but this is the ancient like look. How cute this fucking box is. Oh my God, I keep cussing, I'm sorry. Like rated PG-13. But yeah, straight from Italy. I tried to like date it. I couldn't really date it. I knew it was from the 40s or something. But you can buy, sorry, this is my my cake stand, tripod stand um, ghetto, right? Anyways, yeah, so this is my roller. You can buy one at the store. You don't have to. You can literally hand roll it out. This is just so much nicer. You can change the width and everything of how like thin you want your stuff. I'm going to make angel hair noodles. Um, not angel hair, but smaller noodles than these big like fettuccine ones. And you can get different attachments. Maybe not for this one, but for the one that you would buy in the store. But yeah, this is my roller. I'm going to show you how to use it and everything today. I'm going to shut up and make these noodles. Now. Okay, so I have two cups of flour in this bowl. I'm going to do two cranks. Oh my god, maybe of my Himalayan salt. I'm gonna do fourth of a teaspoon, my cracked pepper. I like to get a little season in my noodles, whatevs. Um, gonna do two tablespoons of oil. I'm gonna do three eggs in here. Maybe. And then this is where it gets fun. We're gonna make the dough. Okay, I'm just gonna take my spatula, do that folding technique that I 
talked about earlier when we made the bread. This is really going to turn into a dough though, you guys. Like, like sugar cookie, play-doh type dough. Okay, so this is really, we're getting this really into a dough here. So I'm going to keep, just keep folding, keep mashing. Love and labor, guys. Your food's going to taste so much better. I'm going to mash it out. mashed it out gonna put it back in this bowl and we're gonna do the same cheesecloth wow cheesecloth towel wet damp towel method put it over the top just gonna let it rest Gosh, my dog this is what your focaccia should look like this didn't even take an hour it took 30 minutes you just want it to like double to like oh my gosh i need to stop there's my grandparents again. Hi, on their wedding day. And I promise that's not food splatter. This is like an original picture. Anyways. Yeah, doubled in size. So now we're going to move it to a butter. Moving it to a buttered baking sheet. Okay. Here we go. It's going to be so... Oh, it feels beautiful. It feels like, oh my God, like slant. Oh, it's just so beautiful. So light and airy, beautiful. Oh my God. So most of it came out of the bowl. I am so excited to eat this. Like, oh, okay. So we're just gonna gently press it into the form of your pan. You don't wanna air it out. Like you don't, like if you hear bubbles, like psh, psh, like, Let's be a little bit more tender. Okay, so we're gonna have to let this sit and proof again, but we're not gonna have to do the towel thing or anything. We're gonna oil it. So right now, this is from, I don't know, Galena, Illinois. They have a canning company. This is a traditional Italian dipping oil. So it's basically olive oil with a whole bunch of seasoning. I'm gonna use this to drizzle on top of the bread. I'm sure you can find this not this, but something like this in store. Just some sort of Italian herbed olive oil. You don't have to do that. You can use normal olive oil and whatever seasonings you so want. I'm just gonna yeah, do a drizzle. Sometimes I get... I'm also going to use... This is a garlic and herb dipping sauce. It's basically a balsamic. Remember, you don't even have to use this. I'm just using this for added... Um, flavor. Like I said, you can literally do anything with this focaccia bread once you've made the dough. It's all up to you to do like whatever you want. Just want to make sure it's nice and oily and good. Just gonna, gonna move it around here. I'm not done topping this, but we're gonna let it sit with the oil on it for maybe another 10 20 minutes i mean it you saw how big it got within a half hour we're just gonna let it kind of bubble up again proof again and then we will come back and put all of our toppings on and i am putting the focaccia to proof right next to our steaming goodness sauce i'm gonna take a look at this and stir it around take a peek if we want oh yeah we're gonna stir it it's been cooking for about an hour okay so i cut my spaghetti noodle dough into four quartered sections. I'm gonna press this one out just so we can get it through. Am I gonna kind of square it so we can get it through the roller? Um, I would really suggest getting one of these just because you can make so much more stuff than pasta noodles with this. And I know that if you have like a KitchenAid mixer, um, they also have attachments for the top of your mixer. So that's really nice. I am gonna try to squeeze this through. I'm gonna fold it over to a square again. Sorry, okay, going back in. Press this mother out. Yeah, he's not cute. 
We're gonna do it one more time. Okay, perfect. This is what I wanted. So we got a nice strip now. I'm gonna set this one aside, keeping it covered with the damp towel. And I'm basically just gonna continue doing that with the rest of these and then I'll come back. Here are all my pasta babies. We're gonna run it through the smaller side again. Smallest noodles I can get. Oh my God, you guys. Hopefully you have a KitchenAid and you don't have to deal with that. Move my tripod here. And I'm gonna get to cranking these. All right, up. I had to switch angles. I'm sorry, you'll see my window. I'm gonna make the noodles. I'm just gonna show you like one pass. Just so like, you can see it. Okay, so I'm gonna start making the noodles. I got it shoved in here. Here we go. No, I'm cranking the right way. It just wants to rip it up off the thing. Yep, see? I don't know, whatever. Oh, they look pretty though. This is gonna be so good. Just trying to make them not fall off the edge of the table. There are beautiful pasta noodles. Yay. Okay, I'm gonna do that to the rest of them. Pasta right bread's back. nice and bubbly, proofy, nummy goodness. So what we're gonna do now is you're gonna make little holes with your fingers. Oh, this bread's gonna be so good. I have my oven preheated to 350. So we're basically just gonna make these little pockets for all the oily goodness to get into. Okay, and then I'm gonna top it, but I'll show you that in a different view. Okay, so on my focaccia, get my pasta maker out. I diced, I didn't dice, I like sliced up some shallots. I love shallots, onion, garlic. I'm gonna, you can put literally whatever you want on the top of this bread, tomatoes, basil, uh, green onion. I'm gonna do a couple cranks of my sea salt. And then I grated some Asiago that I'm just gonna sprinkle over top. Love Asiago, that's like my favorite cheese. Asiago, Fontina, or however you pronounce it. It's my fave. Okay. That is that. I'm gonna pop it in the oven again, 350. I will tell you how long it takes me. I forgot to show you guys my nudes. I have it under the damp towel. Look at all of them, yay. I'm gonna leave it under there until I'm ready to cook them. Okay, I would say this did not even take me, it was a little under two hours for me to get the sauce ready, make the noodles and make the focaccia bread like as far as being active in the kitchen. So, I mean, if you have time, two hours is like, it's not that much for a home, like you can say this is freaking a home cooked meal. It's outrageous, but yeah, le less than two hours. Um, my sauce is still cooking. I just put the focaccia in. I'll see how long that takes. And of course I'll check back in with you when it's time to make the noodles. And my sauce is done. I'm just keeping it warm on simmer, about ready to boil the noodles. I'm not really gonna show that cause it's kind of hard, but you're just gonna boil them for like 10, 20 seconds. And then I'll show you the finished product. Guys, this is the finished product. I just poured it over the noodles. You don't want to mix it in. It'll get mushy and plus you want to save your sauce without the noodles. But that's the finished product. I put Asiago Parmesan on top. Um, the bones in the braised rib pretty much fell out. I just shredded it. There's that.